Step on the mud sucker. This is a hog. There we go. There it is. Yeah. Oh god. Tyler Cage, bro. Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and today we're launching out of Rio Vista, California in search of the bigger, badder stripers. We're gonna be doing a lot of different proven methods today from jigging, uh, drifting live bait, throwing top waters, throwing swim baits, whatever we have to do to find them. The majority of our stripers around here stay right on that main Sacramento River, uh, but we'd like to target those little tributaries and those flooded ponds right off of that area. So why don't you come ahead and hop on board with us and let's go whack them. There we go, baby. Hooked up on the mud sucker. I just want to put this rod back down the rod, hold, rod holder to take off my sweater, and I just seen it start jumping. Doesn't feel too big. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So we're using these, I'm, I actually have a one-aught trocar mosquito hook on here, and I'm using 12-pound fluorocarbon line, and we have that, uh, double surgeon's loop on that little tiny hook to allow that bait to free around and you know swim naturally and I'll show you that but with these smaller hooks is you know I'm on a medium heavy setup right now this rod it's actually one of my cranking sticks I don't want to over horse the hook the hook is a very thin diameter if I start pulling too hard on the fish I'm gonna lose them it's probably about a five or six pound fish here I'll go down and try to lift them for you see if see if we can get them in the boat here can you hold this for me Landon There we go. About a four and a half, five pounder. Not bad. Let me reach in, pop this hook out. I swallowed my mud sucker and got the hook right there. You see this little tiny hook like that? When you got a little tiny hook and let's say it gets him right here and you start pulling real hard, you're gonna tear a big hole. He starts shaking his head, that hook can come out real easy. So you wanna take your time, back off your drag a little, bring these nice big fish up to the boat. Not too many snags out here. If we were a little bit closer to the bank, I might be thinking about trying to horse them over a little bit, but nice quality fish to get it started. So now for the rig that I was using on my three-way right here. This is a Pucci rolling drop swivel. This is just a three-way three -way swivel like this, but each one of these points can turn independently from one another, so you have very limited line twists. My main line, like I said, is that 12-pound fluorocarbon. I'll often drop to like a 8-pound on my dropper weight, as you can see, just like that to my weight, I want to go lighter. And that way, uh, if it gets caught in the rocks, it'll break off and that's all I have to retie is that part. Um, I want it to be not nearly as strong as my main line going to that fish. Also, if that fish drags into the rocks, I want this to break off and I don't want to lose the fish. Um, from there, I have about a three, three and a half foot fluorocarbon leader. I generally use about the same as my main line. Um, you know, you might want to go a little bit lighter in case you break off. It doesn't you don't lose a lot of your other terminal tackle, but I'm running 12 to 12 on here. And to that hook, this is a one-aught uh, trocar mosquito hook. You can see this little loop knot that I have on there. That's the double surgeon's loop knot. Uh, what it does is it allows that hook to move freely and the line doesn't affect the hook or the bait's movement that you want to have real natural. If it's alive, uh, you don't want to have a lot of resistance against that fish. Um, for example, with the minnow, I'm going through the bottom of the chin and out the nose. You don't want to hit the vitals if you can prevent it, and you always want to pull them forward. You're drifting, you're pulling forward. You don't want to hook them in the back to where you're towing them backwards. They start drowning, you kill the bait. Um, you don't want to open their mouth and hook them through there. It's going to blow their mouth open, and it's ve also very unnatural. So go through the bottom of the chin and out the nose. That's the way you want it. Uh, you want to hit a hard vital spot in there to where they can move around freely right there. If you're finding that your bait's off and coming and you're coming up your uh, shank of your hook there and getting hooked into the side, what you can do is use like a little uh, bait stop just like you do for a spinner bait or something and put it right there. You can use another small plastic, put it right there and it'll prevent your bait from actually getting hung back up on the hook. But that's that rig right there. The minnow, the one-aught trocar, double surgeon's loop, 100% fluorocarbon. Going back to that rolling drop swivel right there, that three-way. My uh, my dropper right here, I like about 10 inches to a foot. Um, your bait's going to still be down there in the bottom right in those fish's face. And going right up to your main line, just like so. And that'll do it.
There we go, on the jig, huh? Ooh. On the chubby chaser. Hooked up on the chubby chaser. Nice. Are we coming up here that, uh, that free? Not yet. Let's see if he takes it. Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> I saw you still holding on to it for a while there. Yeah. Cool. Did you suspend that one? Uh, no, I touched down. Okay, now for my rod and my reel. We are using a very light hook right here. And we're using a light line, 12 pound fluorocarbon line. I find that it works really smoothly with live bait. Um, if you're going, of course, with a much bigger bait, if you're using like a foot long bait or, you know, something like that's alive, you want to you want to probably jump up to a 15 or 20 pound fluorocarbon. But when I'm drifting minnows or uh, mud suckers, you know, along in the delta, I'm using 12 pound, 100% fluorocarbon. That 100% allows you to detect it. If you're at 35 feet and that fish just goes boom on your minnow, you're going to see your rod jump it's really going to let you know um since we are using lighter hooks we really want to use a light amount of drag see how easy i can pull that off what that's going to do is if i have the rod in the rod holder and it's drifting along and that fish buries it okay he's going to be able to take drag and start running off with it um, a little amount of pressure on your drag just very little you got a one-aught mosquito hook right here the thing's going to penetrate with just the lightest amount of pressure it's going to get them it's going to allow them to eat that bait uh, you'll still hook up with them plus it won't double your rod over break your rod off you can pick it up you can you know tighten down your drag tension a little bit if you want to from there so that being said you don't need a really strong drag so i actually like using my smoke reels the real fast ones i use a seven to one um, the reason for that is if the fish pulls off a lot of drag at me and turns back i can pick up a lot of that slack line and maintain that tension on this lighter hook like that for the rod i'm actually using my crankbait rod this is an eye rod right here the reason why i use a crankbait rod is they're really limber they bend right in the middle you want a lot of cush you don't want a fast rod with a ton of backbone that's going to tear that hook you want a rod with a lot of cushing uh, you'll see some of my other buddies in this film using a really really limber rod that's so that hook doesn't tear free uh, it allows that fish to eat that bait and go so you want that limber rod you want a very low stretch line to detect that bite uh, those little tiny hooks little tiny terminal tackle that's not going to uh, wear that bait out you want that hook to move freely so that bait can live a long time if you find your bait starting to die off and you got an aerator in the boat if you see your baits getting lethargic take them off put them in there a lot of the time they'll recover so grab a new one at that point always keep fresh lively bait on and you will put a heck of a lot more fish in the boat hog I'm gonna cut him off so he doesn't go towards this tree here. You don't have to I mean, Turn around. Here. Minutes after running in here, man. Drop so down I with the live minnow. Just give that Everybody looks up. I look over at Landon's rod. Wham! Smash down, drag screaming It'll off. So we haven't even got to see this fish yet, but it definitely, uh, it's got to be a good one. It's a hog. Got eyes on fish yet? Yeah. Yes. Got him. Got him. Yeah. There we go. Hooked up with a big girl. That's right. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. See if she kicks away. Yeah, she'll be. Hang with us, guys. We'll be right back. Did you know that Beeline makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs? From the super strong abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch super stealthy CX Premium. Or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with Beeline's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, Beeline's got it covered. To find out more, visit Beeline.com. Beeline, baby! Attention Northern California anglers, have you been to boat country in Escalon? With one of the largest selections of welded aluminum fishing boats from Wellcraft Low and Hughescraft, chances are they've got the right fishing boat for you. And did I mention they have a full service center to take care of all your boating, repair, and maintenance needs? If you're a boat owner or just looking to become one, you owe it to yourself to check these guys out. Visit BoatCountryUSA.com or stop on by. 
I'll see you there. Ever tried pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Hey sportsmen, have you ever wanted an all-in-one cleaning tool for small game or fish? Well look no further, the Sportsman Field Tool offers an all-in-one stainless steel construction with all the bells and whistles. From a fillet knife, snip, snub knife, gut rake, and a scaler in its indestructible case, you really can't go wrong. Check your local retailers or visit sportsmanfieldtool.com. I'm sure you've already heard of the Miller Punch Weight for penetrating the heaviest cover with ease for those big old bass. And have you heard of the Red One trolling motor assist cable to either add on or replace those chintzy ones that they come with? You have now. And tired of switching in between split ring tools or breaking off fingernails? We'll grab a Red One wedgie and it'll handle all those bad boys with ease. Visit redonesystems.com. Slow wiggle wiggle. These ones are hard not to walk. Landon got him a keeper jigging back here. Hooked up on the live minnow again. Ah, it's a keeper. He's close. Yeah, he's close. He might not make it. But once again, turn over that way, Landon. Show him there's another fish on the other side of that sweater. <laughs> nah, he's he's close to 18. We'll just go ahead and toss him back. But hey, at least it's uh at least it's another nice cold striper chomping on a live minnow. We prefer them a little bit bigger than this, especially being out here. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Nice. Hell yeah, dog. No, 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 no. Haha, <laughs> no. Get him, no. This is on that handmade lathe card wood, wood topwater bait. Oh, it's a nice one. That's a good topwater fish right here. You want to get me the boga grips? So this is on the five inch morning wood. <laughs> All behind you. Yeah, go. go, go. Uh oh. Who's under here? Or just start walking. See what happens when you get there. Yep. Got him? Yep. Yep. Oh, good one. Oh, this is a good one again. This is about the same size as the last one. Get on the hand carved wood. Don't point it at him, landing. I know, I know he's pushing that way. Just don't point it at that bull. <laughs> He got himself a good hook set. Yeah. Coming back, guys. All right. Hang with us, guys. We'll be right back. Been thinking about trying out kayak fishing or already into it and just want some sick upgrades for your rig? It's time to check out the Headwaters Kayak Shop. Come pick the brains of their knowledgeable staff and make sure to ask about their awesome demo program to find the right kayak for you. Or stop in and rent one with Lodi Lake right down the street. The Headwaters Kayak Shop fits all your yakking needs. Tell them if sent ya. Have you been to RustyLures.com? Did you know they offer free shipping on anything over $29.99? And with all the latest and greatest in bass fishing gear from punching tackle, umbrella rigs, swim baits, and you name it, there's really no reason for you not to be getting the best deal online today. So go to www.RustyLures.com. Did you ever wish for an RC boat when you were a kid? And do you have a passion for fishing? Well, guess what? It's time to do them both at the same time. With RCFishingWorld.com's RC Fishing Pole, it's time to be a kid again. So visit www.rcfishingworld.com today. Okay, now when we're throwing these big topwater baits out there like this, 
you need a heavy rod. You need a bigger rod. I actually like nothing less than a seven foot six. I like to pick up a lot of line on my hook sets. I like a lot of backbone, so I'm using a heavy, fast action. A fast action rod is gonna give you just enough tip uh, with a lot of backbone that you can walk these baits uh, side to side really good with. When you're using a bigger bait like this and you're going for bigger stripers, I suggest nothing less than 65 pound braid. You may think it's overkill, but that's what you need. Uh, a lot of people try to do 50, they set the hook too hard, there's no stretch. Believe it or not, you can cause more than 50 pounds of pressure on something that has no stretch. Striper grabs it going this way, he's 20 pounds. You're pulling this way, you're 200 pounds. You think 50 pounds is not too hard to accomplish? Well. It's not, I mean, you can bust it off really easy. So these big baits like this, I'm using the 65 pound, I'm using a heavy rod, minimal seven foot six. I like a, a, you know, as big as I can go. I was actually throwing it on my iRod Big Swim. I like that rod a lot. Um, I am trying to use a little bit faster reel. When you hook a big striper like that, they're gonna take drag. I don't care how strong your reel is, they're gonna peel it off. Um, I always upgrade my hooks, bigger, badder hooks like this. Um, you know. During the later fall on the Delta, we do target a lot of bigger stripers. In my last episode, I was showing you jigging the schoolie stripers, which is a lot of fun to do. Um, you can get some keepers. They taste better. The bigger ones don't seem to taste nearly as good uh, as those smaller fish. Um, you know, during the early months, a lot of the time, we're going to throw a top water all the way until that water hits about 53 degrees in the morning. Um, you know, if it starts getting real rainy and slick smooth, you can throw a lot of those big glide baits. Um, earlier in the fall, those straight retrieve swim baits do really good. Um, but, you know, they start liking that gliding motion once that water's down in the 50s. But uh, we'll get into that in a later time with those bigger swim baits for bigger stripers. But, you know, we pulled off a lot of big ones on the big wooden top water baits. Uh, we got a few good ones for you drift and bait there. So hopefully those tips help you out. They're sitting on both sides. That's a nice one. Yeah. That's a nice one. Yeah, that's a nice Not as big as my first one. It's a boxer right here. Oh, oh yeah. He's all wrapped up in your mind. No. Yep. Damn. Oh, it's hooked up. There it is. Another good striper. Just last 45 minutes here of sunset. They've just been killing the topwater baits. There's a huge one behind mine too. Yeah! Oh God! I'm getting a, I just had a blow up right now, I right next that. to Nick's fish. Oh golly. Oh, oh toad. That's the Ew. biggest one so far, huh? Oh. Oh. Get that, get that line out of the water over there. Oh yeah. Woo! -hoo -hoo. Okay. That's the, that's those silent baits right there, no rattles. Oh, my right. lord. It makes such a big difference in these shallow waters. Grab that fish from there. Yeah. Got him? Yeah. Woo! Oh, he just kicked it. <sighs> Holy. Yeah. <laughs> Get that! Oh my! Hold on! Hold on! There you go. Hold that rod! Oh man! Oh, that is a monster right there on the six-inch bait. <laughs> Tyler Case, right there, baby. Yeah, you want a walking bait for the Delta to stick some toads? I gotta come and get in that shot right Tyler there. has not even started mass producing these yet, but he lets me fish them. Uh, Tyler and Landon, nice two of my new there, boys. Yeah. This is Tyler the man yeah. right here. These things, oh my god, these things will be for sale. I gotta, I gotta, 
Go grab this full. Yeah, not long here. Oh, Ob yeah. Obviously they work. We're still in the testing stages, but obviously they're working. That guy's and, about. Yeah, uh, we're gonna start kicking these out. Whew. Yeah, so I'll put them in the description. As soon as they're available, yeah. I'll let you know when Tyler's actually selling these things. This has gotta be our six one over 10 pounds. Oh yeah, absolutely. Just in the last 30 minutes. Look at that. I gotta go get my bait back in the water. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. oh, that's another monster. We got a double one. I gotta chase that fish. I gotta chase that fish, I'm going. Oh. No, go around the island, we gotta go around. Going around the back. Swing that one in. Oh, I forgot your hook top broke, sorry. Here, swing that rod back. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God, I'm turning around. Yeah, you can hit. Back to no wonder back. he felt so huge. Yeah. Huh? I let yours go. Back to back cast, man. Right out here, outside of Rio Vista, fishing islands, fishing sloughs. Man, it, it doesn't get much better than this. Big top water baits, big explosions. This back-to-back -back cast, that last giant. Now That's this bad eight. boy. What's that? That's number eight. This number eight? All right. Probably eight fish. This is pushing over 10 pounds, too. This is probably 11, 12 pounds. It, absolutely incredible evening. Bro, I'm going to see if I can double up on this. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, that's that 20 pounder that you had. I think so. I think so. I the light. Hey, I think something's wrong with your drag. I keep hearing it peel off. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it's another squirrel. Yeah, I think this might be a shaker. Okay, we're gonna have to pull out the roller on that one. Yeah, hello? Yeah, I'm at like 30 Oh my god. I've never had a striper make runs like this. What happened with that line you just got? You know what? It seems like it just keeps disappearing on it. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> I'm getting bit by the mosquitoes and it's still fun. This might be a 30 pounder. Oh! Alright, Cove, so I need help, man. We're gonna have to put this one back. But that's okay. This is the fun part. Here's gonna swing by you with the net. Okay, I'm coming around. Sorry. Yeah! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god, I can't even pick that sucker up. Hold on, bro. I got him. That's a that's a 25. That might push, that might push closer to 30, bro. We don't have a scale, huh? No scale, that's all right. So we weighed this fish on Tyler's Boga style scale. Um, the only problem is it was kind of hard to tell if it was jumping between 25, 27, uh, but we measured the fish out at 41 inches long. And if you look that up, it's right around 30 pounds on the mark. So an absolutely beautiful fish that we got to get back in the water soon. Oh, there she goes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. There she goes. Thank you, big girl. Reliablefishingproducts.com. Kill bad guys. I'm gonna keep these nice big old stripers nice and fresh and cold on the way home. We're not gonna jeopardize the meat whatsoever. We got a big old bag full of giants right here. These kill bags are absolutely incredible. It's like a cooler that you can keep down in your fish box, not taking up deck space. When you get the big ones, you can pull it out, throw some ice in there, keep those bad boys cold. There we go, baby. Just another night out here at Rio Vista having some fun, drifting some bait, throwing some big old topwaters at the end to call out our small ones. And nothing but good times. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to check out informativefisherman.com. We look for Tyler's baits coming out. We'll see you next time.